Hey, I'm Fight the Flat Earth, and welcome back to the channel that does to stupidity what Disney have done to Star Wars. Today on episode 17 of Flurfs Are Idiots, we're taking a look at a flurf with a very, very basic view of the world that boils down to, looks flat to me, so it fucking must be. What is it with these absolute morons and scale? Yes, it looks bloody flat. The earth is fucking massive. What is wrong with you people? This particular dumbass is from my original neck of the woods in Bristol by the sounds of it. So I felt I had to prove that not all West Country boys are walking piles of stupid. So join me and some Canadian platypus as we take another trip down Dunning-Kruger Lane to the street of misunderstanding and finally the coldy sack of stupidity where we find this idiot, Level Earth Observer. We're living on a disc floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> So, Level Earth Observer, great, great name, well done. Just like every other flurf, you seem to think that everybody is lying to you, and that includes the space agencies of other nations, nations that aren't necessarily even that friendly to the West. They still agree with the big, bad NASA, including Israel Space Agency, who recently had a lunar lander fail a landing and impact the moon, but before it did, it took this picture at 13.6 miles above the surface of the moon. Let's see what his problem with it is. Not only is it 22 kilometers high and it's taking something, a photograph of something in close, in focus, and 22 kilometers away in focus. I'd love to know what camera that is. Well, if you've done any research at all, I know it's a scary prospect, but if you had done any research, you would have found out it's an eight megapixel Imperix Bobcat B3320C with Ruder Optics, which is capable of capturing 4K images at 10.6 frames per second. An excellent example of the ignorance flurfs are proud to display. But as for the moon's surface being in focus, I mean, I just really don't agree with that because it kind of looks blurry to me. But Israel, along with China, and I've addressed this a month or so ago, are debunking the heliocentric model. So your argument is that Israel and China have proved the moon is CGI because you say the photos are CGI. So you're the arbiter of truth. You have the necessary photo forensic analysis skills to make the assertion that both China and Israel showed pictures with a fake CGI moon. No, you fucking idiot. You don't even have the skills to type what camera did the Bereshit lunar lander use into Google. By claiming the moon is CGI because this is blatant CGI. So Israel are pushing the CGI moon theory along with China, thus debunking the whole heliocentric fantasy in doing so. Debunking NASA's moon landings because they're showing CGI here and touting it as a selfie picture of the moon. Yes, yes you heard it here guys. Israel and China are pushing the CGI moon theory. Fuck me, that's stupid. I mean, this is grown people giving a standing ovation to a piece of tin foil and a CGI image. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking oy vey, oy vey. Dear, oh dear. And too bloody right, they should get a standing ovation for a nation that only came into existence 21 years before the first moon landing. To get that close to themselves landing on the moon is fucking incredible. Let's see what else this lobotomy patient has to vomit all over the internet, shall we? Let's just put to bed the globe, the focal pendulum, once and for all. Because we've got two of my favourite things here. The water and tower cranes. They both destroy the heliocentric fantasy we call the globe. And this confuses me because on some level, this guy must be kind of smart because he's trusted with heavy machinery, like a tower crane. But then in the same breath, he says water and tower cranes, which again, he's trained in the operation of, destroy the globe. Oh well, let's see what he gets wrong about the Foucault pendulum. The Foucault pendulum lot, desperate, trying to save the reputation of that Freemasonic clown. You don't know how the Foucault pendulum works. I know exactly how the story goes. And the fact a gigantic spinning ball that it's sat on can't get it going. It needs to be have a kickstart. 
is just absurd in the first place. And there we go. Proof that you have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Like at all. The folk cult pendulum shouldn't just start on its own. The point is, you measure the precession of the swing, which at the poles would be about 15 degrees an hour. And you can't back that, that claim, mind. I'm still waiting two years later for you to show me a perfectly stationary crane on a spinning ball to back that absurd claim. Still waiting. Well, right now you're kind of in one, except we don't live on a ball. It's an oblate spheroid with a circumference of approximately 25,000 miles. And this is the globe logic, yeah? With that focal pendulum. So with that in mind about kickstarting pendulums and stuff. So the moment, according to the globe, <laughs> I engage the slew here in this tower crane. I am now suddenly at the mercy of a gigantic spinning ball flying through a vacuum, yeah? Fasten your seatbelts here. Get ready for it. Nothing. The brake came off, the crane moved a bit. Nothing. Brake back on. Wait, 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 wait. So, so you think that we think the second you release the brake on the crane, it should start flailing around like the arms of M. Benz? You really have no idea about the thing you're trying to debunk, do you? The Earth is rotating at 0 0.000694 RPM. That's half as fast as the hour hand on a clock. I think you need to go to the remedial classroom to learn about the folk court pendulum. Right class, if you could get out your textbooks to page 666, section 33, we're going to take a look at the folk court pendulum. Yes, Mr. Riley, what is it? You, you don't know why we're looking at folk court. What, what do you mean? You don't see what French philosophy has to do with the shape of the earth. What are you on about? No, no, we aren't going to cover to discipline and punish. Oh, I see. No, you fucking idiot. Leon Foucault. Leon Foucault. He came up with the Foucault pendulum and died in 1868. Michel Foucault is a French philosopher that died in 1984. How can you be so stupid? I wonder if like the flat earth would include that in his top 10 dumbest things you've ever said. Anyway, as well as discovering eddy currents, naming the gyroscope, and making early measurements of the speed of light, Leon Foucault also gave us the Foucault pendulum, which is a simple device used to measure and demonstrate the Earth's rotation. As a pendulum swings, its plane of oscillation remains fixed to the distant masses of the universe, while Earth rotates underneath it. So at the North Pole, viewed from above, the pendulum would complete one clockwise rotation in a sidereal day. When the pendulum is suspended at the equator, the plane of oscillation remains fixed relative to the Earth. At other latitudes, the plane of oscillation precesses relative to Earth. The angular speed measured in clockwise degrees per sidereal day is proportional to the sign of the latitude. For example, a Foucault pendulum at 30 degrees south latitude rotates clockwise in two days. Now, Mr. Riley, I noticed you didn't take any notes. Why not? Because you're so awesome, you're getting a whole week about you. Um, yeah, yeah, you are. But I don't think you're going to like it. Okay, time to pass you off to the Canadian platypus. It's weird. I thought... I thought the platypus was from Australia. All right, fight. Why you got to point out this amount of stupid? I was trying to make this video for days, but I just kept falling asleep. So here we go. I'm, I'm not sure how many times I can listen to him say demonstrable reality, though. My mind is going to blow up. Another globe thing is, thousands of miles down there, there's cranes operating right now upside down with concrete flying out the skip flying up towards the bottom of the ball, held there, but again, by forces that cannot be felt. Again, this is ridiculous, people. Fundamental facts of life tell us this. Demonstrable reality tells us this. Let's face it, these flat earthers always fall into a few categories. This is one of those looks flat kind of guys. It's very similar to Ranty Flat Earth, boring. I'll give Ranty though that he at least tries to do more than go just look how still the water is, but he just constantly keeps proving the globe, so I don't know where he's going with that. I mean, this guy is the same deal. Look how calm my load is, taut at the end of a line with a constant pull down towards the earth, but I suppose a crane driver, I mean, his god must be droppity, I guess. Watched a video last night by a globey. Don't know how it came up in my feed. Chap called Ron. 
seemed like a nice fella, to be fair. Although Ron's opinions of the flat earth have been shaped by mainstream media. Obviously, nothing but propaganda, misrepresentations, straw man maps and models. So already Ron's fallen for this misrepresentation by the very people. Let's be fair, if you wanted to get the opinion of the flat earth, would you really ask the opinions of the people who have globes at the start of their news programs, spinning globes at the start of their movies? Well, yeah, but of course they use globes. Oh, that's right. It's a big conspiracy. That's far more likely than it being a reference to bringing the news from around the planet. Oh, yes. Sorry, around the frisbee. You'd ask the people in question, the flat earthers. Now I know there's a lot of misrepresentation here. Even on the flat earth side. The flat earth society being one of them. Controlled opposition. Truth mixed with lies. Oh lord, here we are again. It's all a lie, it's government control. It just seems so crazy to me that these people don't see the crazy. You look at this fool here. He's doing the same dance a lot of the flat earthers do. It's this mental illness they have that makes them see everything as a conspiracy. This one's going as far as to say that the main flat earth society is controlled opposition. You see how that perfectly makes him authority on flat earth? He's saying, f*** all of them, I'm right. Look at me. He had been saying he wanted to punch Ron, but then he said he felt so sorry for Ron he wanted to give him a big ol' hug. Let's hear what Ron had to say that made him so angry. And uh, whilst I'm walking down here, I want to explore the possibility of flat earth belief being a mental health issue. They say it's not a cult, there's no cult leaders, although there are some more, some prolific, some more prolific uploaders of flat earth videos than others, but they're not cult leaders. It's not a religion. Are they calling it a movement? When the TV people do documentaries on them? But I would go so far as to suggest it is a, there are some mental health issues afflicting some of these people, or if not anybody that believes the earth is flat. Oh right, so anyone that trusts fundamental facts of life, demonstrable reality, the one thing, i.e. that the earth is a level plane, that cannot be disproven, you think is insane. Anyone who believes demonstrable reality is insane. Instead, they need to watch TV, believe absurdities, like thinking they're on a projectile flying through a vacuum at 291 times faster than a speeding bullet. They all have this issue with how fast we're going and they fail to understand the physics of it all. They show the stillness of water and profess that there's no way that there would be feeling the movement. We kept trying to tell Danny Boy the same thing, but we couldn't get through. Remember, Dan? We told you that if you were in a moving car going at 70 miles per hour, that you would- You're f***ing insane. Okay, fine, I'll bite. I want to show you both something. This is some of the fastest trains in the world operating in China. What's interesting about this is they are going 350 kilometers per hour, sustained, along what's probably a maglev system that keeps the train above the ground and essentially floating on magnetism. It has minimal resistance because of the lack of physical contact to the ground. This results in a smooth ride because there's less directional change. You know that thing that makes you feel that you're moving? However, this train is still affected by the changes in track height and wind gusts, etc. that create small fluctuations in its moving direction, resulting in the fairly minute but still visible amount of movement in the very small test example of that bottle of water. The planet, however, is moving through a true frictionless environment, so unless it changes direction, you're not about to feel it. It actually hurts me that I have to explain this. These machines cannot operate safely on a spinning ball that's flying through a vacuum. Cannot. Cannot be de de demonstrated in any shape or form that these cranes can work on a spinning ball. The globies will shut out gravity, but an explanation of the way things fall doesn't explain how water can suddenly change its molecular structure and have the ability to wrap 
and conform to the outside of shapes. How in the world would water conforming to the outside of a ball change its molecular structure? I get the impression you don't know what the f*** you're talking about, right? <laughs> now, what makes more sense to someone using logic here? Am I driving this crane on top of a cannonball that's doing half a million mile an hour, flying through space, whilst I'm spinning and wobbling and oscillating? Or do you think I might be on a non-rotating Earth, which isn't moving anywhere, thankfully? What do you think here? What makes more sense, I wonder? Let's just have a think about this. <laughs> Actually, it makes more sense you're on a Tonka toy construction site operating a f***ing toy crane like this. <laughs> All right, I've had about enough of him, but uh, before I go, I want to ask him one more time what his favorite term was. Was it was it demonstrable reality? In demonstrable reality, fundamental facts. Fundamental facts? Fundamental facts. Fundamental facts. Fundamental facts of life. Demonstrable reality. Fundamental fact. Oh, okay, fundamental facts. Fundamental fact. Demonstrably true. Demonstrable reality. Fundamental truths. Fundamental truths? Demonstrably true. There you have it. Flat Earth. Demonstrably true. Fundamental facts. Fundamental facts of life. Demonstrable realities. Whatever the f*** you want to call it. Back to you, fight. God, that's enough to make a man drink. Really? Thanks for that. I'm, um, I'm not buying that you're a beaver, though. Hashtag brain, a platypus. Okay, so I was going to leave it there, but then Level Earth Observer uploaded this gem just after Simon Dan uploaded his newest video where the yodeler returned. The flat earther that recorded this apparently did so with a potato, so the quality is awful. If you want to see Simon Dan's video in all its glory, then please take a look at the link in the description. But for now, let's have a look at uh, Level Earth Observer's thoughts. I don't want to know I live on a spinning ball. Oh, I don't know. How about this? Lovely. Simon Dan showed a bunch of actual pictures of the Earth from space. Although I suppose you could say that isn't really evidence it's spinning. For that we have to ask someone like Bob Nadell. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. Thanks Bob. So what is level Earth observers take on all this? How do I know if Nookie Bear's real or not? Hmm, how about this? Bear's got more credibility than the globe. <laughs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. So, so you think showing a picture of a stuffed bear that no one ever claimed was a real, real bear is comparable to actual images of the Earth from space? Well, I'll leave that nugget of wisdom with you guys and wrap up the episode there. If you've enjoyed this, then please leave a thumbs up and subscribe and also subscribe to Brainy Platypus for more Australian adventures in Canada. And don't forget that Sleeping Warrior Week starts on Monday with videos not just from me, but also from Team Skeptic, Conspiracy Cats, Planner Walk, The Creaky Blinder, 
and more. Remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk and Sleeping Warrior Week is coming up. So you know what that means? I shit on Anthony Riley. And you know what? I've decided that Anthony Warrior doesn't even deserve enough rec whatever it is to deserve a proper thing. So I'm just recording this while I'm drunk. So get ready for things like Riley's Rooster and Riley messing up completely what an independent variable is. And you see, I actually modeled the planets of Earth and Jupiter when I was sober. Uh, and something about the cones, I've, I've forgotten that shit. You see, I'm going to tear Anthony Riley a new one. Because, you see, even when I'm drunk, that does not lower me to the mental capacity to think that the Earth is flat. But there will also be a third video this week, but that's not related to Anthony Warrior Week at all. This footage is completely irrelevant. Pay no attention. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flat. Fight the flag, 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 fight the